Okay, so, um, all the stuff I go through for this show, I, I want to show you the perfect example to just illustrate exactly how much stress and work and effort all this stuff is. Okay? This was my first gift of the holiday season. Look who it's from. Walmart has realized I buy so much Excedrin, they're sending it to me for Christmas. This is what you do to me. I'm having a hard enough time not stalking Anderson Cooper because Anderson Cooper is in my town. Was he the one who came out? Yeah. Then why would you stalk him? Because I want to be his friend. I want I he I want to be his new sassy, red haired, sarcastic friend because I think I'd be way better at it than Kathy Griffin. Like, I don't want to be Anderson Cooper's girlfriend. I just want us to go out and drink and shop and be bitchy together. You remind me of a little short brunette woman from uh, Will and Grace. Karen Walker? Yeah. Yeah. But I would like to be Anderson Cooper's Grace. <laughs> okay. So I'm having a hard time not stalking him. <laughs> you are weird. Shall we, shall we begin? Yes. We got a whole mess of crazy, and I'm going to warn you. Our last story tonight, ladies, brace yourselves. We'll get there, but holy God. All right, let's start with, uh, with the theme song. That's probably a good place to start. Each week, Catherine goes out on the worldwide interwebs, finds all sorts of horrible stuff, and brings it back here for a segment we like to call, What the Fuck is Wrong With You? And this guy, this the, the first guy, I'm on our list tonight is is not really what the fuck ish it's more what do you mean there's no music i could hear the music did you hear the music i never hear the music right. there was music you people just have to, I, have to I have to shut off the stream to make skype work so i never hear the music shut up you're not helping not you them you you're not helping guys stop spamming all Spamming right. is not helpful. All right. So first guy on our story tonight. Uh -oh. This is not a what the fuck is wrong with you. Rather, this man is my new hero. I love this guy. Let me give you the story. Man wears 70 items of clothing to avoid baggage ch charge. A man but I bet they made him buy a second seat. Man took to putting on 70 items of clothing to avoid an extra baggage charge at the airport. Pastor turned up uh, Guangzhou, Guangzhou, I think I'm saying that right. Um, described as looking like a sumo wrestler. Uh, the man's luggage see the weight limit. He did not want to pay the extra baggage cost and thus took out and wore more than 60 shirts and nine pairs of pants. Wanted to board a flight to Nairobi, Kenya, he was stopped by the metal detector, and this is the best part, and had to undergo a full body search. That must have taken hours. Hours, because they had to get him back out of it all again. See, I would just assume that they would be like, okay, yeah, smart ass, you don't have to pay the second baggage charge, but now you're big enough that you're going to have to buy the extra seat. But he's squishy, so he can squeeze into the one seat. At some point. Well, and the thing is, like, once you get to the point where you have 60 shirts on. How did he do that? Those shirts have to get bigger and bigger. How did he do that? And nine pairs of pants. I think this is the first confusing story we've ever had where someone was wearing too much clothing. Yeah. It's normally too little. Like, how... How do you get a pair of pants over a pair of pants the same size? Like, that's not going to work. It's like those little little Russian nesting dolls, you know? Only with pants. <laughs> uh, 
Okay. Well, that I I'm I kind of have to give him the defiance there because you know what? Fuck those people. We're moving on to uh let's see if I'm getting this Madison, Wisconsin. What? Yeah. You had that look on your face like something's horrible. Um well, something probably is. Yeah. Moving on to Madison, Wisconsin, and when I first read this headline, I, my my thinking was, well, that's just bad grammar, because you're not saying that right. No, no, their grammar is perfect on this headline. Madison police investigating toilet shooting. And my first thought was someone got shot in the toilet. No, no. When store staff heard a loud bang last Thursday afternoon, they thought someone had come from somewhere outside. Uh, they uh, they walked out of the uh, store to invent the Ke uh, Kelly Williamson mobile to investigate. They saw nothing. Short time later, a customer came in and left a note indicating the men's bathroom toilet was in need of repair. An employee went to investigate and found it was actually beyond repair. It had been shot. It had been shattered. Police recover bullet fragments and a shell casing. He murdered a toilet. What did that guy eat? <laughs> you think you think it just came out of the, the, the fucking. Oh, God, no. This is why Taco Bell is a bad idea. I like Taco Bell. I know those Doritos tacos look tempting, but this. Well, no, I wouldn't. No, <laughs> you'll end up murdering a toilet. How? I, I just. I, I say this so many times, but this is honestly one of those moments in your life where you have to stop and think and ask yourself, I have pulled a firearm. On a turlet. What has happened to my life? I actually can sympathize a little bit because until very, very recently, when it, someone was nice enough to repair it for me, my stupid toilet, like every time you flushed it, the tank wouldn't fill. So you had to fill it manually with a pitcher because mm. the thing that was supposed to seal to help it fill wasn't sealing and whatever it was. And it was really like I wanted to shoot that thing once or twice. But... Yeah. That's just mine. Like, that's not the one everyone else has to use well, at the gas station. That's kind of like saying, I'd love to teach that guy a lesson. Or I'd love to kick his ass. No one yeah. ever actually does it. When you find yourself with the gun drawn and an innocent toilet in the firing line. What did it do? That poor toilet. I also have a habit of punishing inanimate objects for my pain. <laughs> Like, if I bump into my coffee table and hurt myself, I will punch the crap out of that coffee table to teach it a lesson. So maybe he got angry at it. The coffee table doesn't know or care. But it makes me feel better. Then I have punished the thing that has harmed me. So maybe he, like, bumped into it or something and got really angry. Motherfucker! You looking at me? Looking at me? You looking at me? <laughs> Okay, our next headline is probably one of my favorite type of headlines because the words all together make something magical. It's 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 glorious and magical and just Here we go. Um This is from Germany. Naked sauna rampage forces spa booze limit. The earning thermal baths near Munich. What's with that picture? I don't know. I guess that's just that's the, not a sauna. No, that's a that's a water slide. What? <laughs> what the heck are you getting with you? You you got to get a better file photo than that. No, it's just someone's yeah, ass at us. That's, that's not how a sauna works. Um, the uh, tipping point was a drunk drunk naked guest who bit two police officers. Other guests complained the 35-year-old Austrian uh, name was misbehaving in one of the saunas uh, without providing exact details. It's always a 35-year-old. This is the age you go crazy. I know. I, look at what we're doing. I have, I have two months left to go crazy before I'm no longer 35. When security guards arrived to escort him out, the man turned violent and throttled one of the guards, tried to push him into a pool, and ripped a chunk out of his hair. 
Police were called and tried to restrain Ooh. a man who, instead of going quietly, bit a female officer on the thigh, another on the arm, and injured a third officer's shoulder. This was the final straw, said the bath manager. Self-control does not work. Now you can only have three drinks, no further. I have never met one of the alcoholic supermen before. Have you? Do you know about these guys? No. It's it's. It, I call them alcoholic supermen because if you get them drunk, they will walk through walls. They will leap tall buildings in a single bound. They just won't land very well. I need an army of these men. <laughs> I'm, ladies and gentlemen, I'm about to get in trouble. I'm sorry. I apologize. I'll put you on a plane to Ireland. I'm hanging out. No, no. Where's the hang up button? No. Oh, you can you can nail Australia all you want, but when it comes around to your country of origin. My country doesn't have wildlife that tries to kill you just because you're standing there. Like Australia is like that M. Night Shyamalan movie with, where the trees tried, decided to kill everybody except for real. Well, yeah, yeah. You know these, you know this type though. They get drunk and suddenly rah, 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 rah. Someone just said go away Tara, go to Ireland. They have internet in Ireland. They you do. guys don't get rid of me that yeah, easy, they, I'm they, sorry. They Why would Okay. My cousin in Ireland watches the show sometimes. They they do have the internet there. I'm sorry. I'm pretty aware of how I behave when I'm drunk. Why would you put yourself in this position? To get toasted and then you know a fight's gonna start. Well, you're you're in a fight and you're naked. So this isn't helping. Never fight naked. Well, it is if you're Vigo Mortensen. Fighting naked's a good thing. Yeah, that movie where he's um, in like the Slavic mob and he kicks the crap out of a guy while he gets in a knife fight naked and wins. I did not see that one. See, that that's the movies. Normally, it's just you suddenly have if you're a guy, you suddenly have a very convenient target. Just well, yeah, yeah. Don't fight. Man, just. And also, I imagine in a sauna, it'd be really slippery. Hmm. Like you're not going to fight effectively when you're naked and slippery. You gotta then it's the just kind of kinky. <laughs> then you need a safe word. Yeah. Um. Next up. Oh dear. And there is video for this one. I'm going to have to adjust it so we can in can see it. I wish there wasn't video for this one, but there is video for this one. Uh, and Tara's like, send me the fucking link. Um. Roger Allen Alvin Henderson arrested after urinating on patrol car. There's no reason we need video for that. Oh, come on. Come on. Well, you don't have Not to watch it. it. You don't you have can't to make me. Yeah, you don't have to watch it. Just going to hold my hippo. Here we go. We're playing the video in the background while I read the story. Uh, clearly, it was not the idea f deal time for Roger, Al Roger Alvin Henderson to be pulled over. Here he comes. Let's uh, get a little further in. I'm just looking at the screen cap from the video. The uh, Aluka County Sheriff's Office say a deputy stopped Henderson on Monday, thinking there was a window tint violation in Henderson's car. Oh, the blurring has begun. Yes, yes. Um, deputy stash camp. <laughs> Shows Henderson is brought in front of the patrol car where he hands the deputy's driver's license. He says he needs to urinate. The deputy does not appear to hear his statement. Instead, walks over to Henderson's car where he speaks with the man's mother inside. On taking a closer look, the deputy realizes the window tinting was in fact legal. He was about to apologize. But at the same time, the dash shows Henderson undoing his pants and urinating all over the front of the deputy's patro patrol car. As the deputy returns to Henderson, let let's get to that point. Um... Let's see where 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 is it? Let's back up a bit. D it says, "Did you pee on my car?" The deputy asked. "You just pissed on my car." Don't fuck with a man's car, especially not ones that have cameras. 
Yeah. All right. You know what? If you've been busted and you're like up on a murder charge or like a big drug charge or some shit. You're, yeah. I mean, if you're going to jail anyway, piss on the car. You know, why not? But but you were going to get let go. It's a window. Potentially, you got what? A fifty dollar fine, hundred dollar fine for a window tint violation. It's it's not the end of the world. It's a ticket. You're going home. You just. Do they actually pull people over for window tint violations? That seems hinky to me. Yeah, they do. You're not supposed to have it tinted below us uh, beyond a certain level. If they can't yeah. see in. But do they really pull people over for that like that? Yes. That cop's oh, like the bad guy. Oh, Krino says he's quite the pisser. Well, yeah, of course, of course, they they pull people over for this because it's a uh, it, oh. it's a it you get a um, quota off this tickets. Yeah, I guess money, 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 money. Yeah, that that uh, uh, simple Kurt. I think that's how you say your name uh, gets it right. Window tint, you get fined. Key on police car, you go to jail. Why would you? Sort of an escalation that I don't understand. Oh, computer Ronan, full of piss and vinegar. <laughs> Not anymore. It's all over the cop car now. Apparently, I don't know this from experience, oh, but God. I was told by someone who claimed he did know from experience that that semen will eat the paint off a car. Because the the. A guy went out with in high school, apparently did this to somebody as a prank and. What? Yeah. So if you ever really, really hate somebody. OK, moving on, yank one out onto their car. Moving on, let's get to this week's uh, grand high douchebag. Get ready to be angry, everyone. Everyone, you will be angry. Remember last week we had the guy who uh, kidnapped the kid to prove the father, you know, is but the father left the keys in the car and the kid in the car. Remember that? Yes. OK. So this this fellow in Salt Lake City uh, decided to kick it up a notch. And um, Salt Lake City dad abandons kids in car after DUI crash. <gasps> Oh, you touch my tra la la. Salt Lake City fathers in jail Tuesday after the day after allegedly abandoning his two young children in his wrecked car while he fled from the scene of a traffic accident. Uh, police said the suspect rear ended another vehicle. He ran from the accident scene on foot, leaving his children ages nine and two behind. Children with sustained minor injuries and transported to a local hospital for evaluation. Police contacted the driver on his cell phone. And eventually convinced him to return to the scene. 27 year old. You picked up that call. You picked up that call. <laughs> After you get in the DUI crash and abandon your fucking children, you picked up that call. Moron. 27 year old was arrested and booked into jail where he remained Wednesday in lieu of $5,000 bail. That's kind of low. Being hailed on suspicion of Class A misdemeanor, Class C, all misdemeanors. All this is misdemeanors. No, 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 no. Well, if he didn't hit anybody. Yeah, OK, yeah. yeah. For since the fuck went is DUI a misdemeanor? I know. How is that not reckless endangerment of endangerment of a minor? Misdemeanor driving under the influence. Misdemeanor? Motherfucker. I think everybody should not be a misdemeanor, especially with kids in the car. Everybody is a dickweed here, except the kids. The yeah, kids, the are, kids like, are. What did we do? Lucky. Kids are lucky that he didn't hit something worse. You re you know what? In 10, 20 years, these kids are still going to remember that when the chips are down, when hard times have come. Dad will leave you. Dad will run like a motherfucker. He will put on his trainers. He will be halfway down the block before you can even say, hey, dad. Wherever their mother is, she's uh, probably arming herself as we speak. Yeah. 
I bet, you know what, it's only $5,000 bail. I'm pretty sure I know why he hasn't gotten out of jail yet. I don't understand how, how I don't understand how it's all misdemeanors, and I don't understand how the bail is so low. Those kids could have been killed. Like, you were driving under the influence with children in the car. Fuck fleeing the scene. I mean, yeah, that makes you an enormous asshole, but that's not the part that could have killed your children. Enormous. How is that a misdemeanor? Because Salt Lake City, I guess. I don't know. That's some bullshit right there. That is some bullshit. That's some bullshit. <laughs> I'm just, you know, Father's Day is going to be awkward for the rest of his life. Hey, Dad, remember that time you crashed a car and I was nine and Billy was two and you ran the fuck away because you were drunk? Yeah, good times, Dad. Here's Tyrak. What, what, what does he get this Father's Day? A whoopee cushion with super glue on it? Maybe. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, most, mostly ladies. This last story is... Brace yourselves. And I'm going to give it to Tara first so she can react to it before it goes on the air. Here you go. Have a look. Wait for it. Wait for it. Oh! And there it goes. Mm -mm. Oh my god, look at the picture! Spain arrests woman with cocaine breast implants. Uh. Spanish police arrested a Panamanian woman on Wednesday who landed in Barcelona uh, with cocaine stuffed inside her breast implants. Uh. The woman was taken to the police uh, at, to, after her vague answers to questions about the reason for her trip to Bogota raised suspicion at the border control. Um, authorities uh, carry out rigorous checks of passengers arriving on so-called hot flights from Latin America. When police discovered fresh scars and blood-stained gauze on the woman's chest, she was taken to a nearby hospital to check her claim she had recently undergone breast implant surgery. The packages were found to carry 1.38 kilograms of cocaine. Look at the picture! Yep. That came out of someone's body! Yep. Ugh. No. Mm -mm. What the fuck is wrong with you, lady? I. There is no amount of money. No amount of money. That is worth unnecessary surgery. Because every time you have surgery, however minor, there is the risk that you will die. Hmm. Staff infections have gone crazy lately. There is no amount of money that is worth unnecessary surgery. There is no amount of money that is worth stuffing your tits full of cocaine. Tara, I want you to stop real fast. Did you ever in your life think the words stuffing your tits full of cocaine would need to be said? No. And yet here we are. We've come to this point. So when's the 21st? How many days before M humanity dash, is over? M dash wins. He says, shove it up your ass, not your tits. <laughs> like you had to cut and oh my god and those yeah. things rupture do you know how many cases there have been of people's breast implants like rupturing and leaking and these are like tied shut I don't know if you can see it on the picture you want uncut like cocaine leaking directly into your body no you don't you don't from your tits no less <sighs> And then you have to get them cut back out. Yes. You have to have two, two unnecessary surgeries because they have to cut those motherfuckers out. And you know, the girls are never going to be the same again. Mm -mm. They're just... Yeah, see, like, you're going to have those scars forever. Yeah. Chances are they're not exactly using, like, a really well-reputed plastic surgeon to do this work, so... Are they really this desperate to get the cocaine out there? They have no other option. This was the best idea they had. I kind of like the idea when they stuffed the Snickers bars full of them. I thought that was good. That was, that was clever. This, this, these that are... didn't involve anybody getting cut open. They were sitting around a table. 
having a meeting about how to get the cocaine out of the country. Some guy raised his hand and said, let's put it in her tits. And everybody thought this was the best plan. I hate saying this. Some lady agreed to it. I hate saying this because I might get shot one day. Drug lords are idiots. I mean, I'm. I'm in some debt and I could use some cash, but. Mm -hmm. At no point is someone going to come up to me and be like, listen, we will get you. We will pay off all your debts and then some and you will never have to work again. All you have to do is let us stuff these bags of cocaine in your tips. I'll be like, you know what? OK, guys, I'll guys, eventually. I, I know this was kind of bad. So before we we go to the wrap up, here you go. It's OK. It will all be better. Look at the puppies. It's puppies. I don't have puppies. I OK, I will show you the puppies in here. We have puppies. Just look at the puppies. Forget about the cocaine tits. Look at the puppies. <laughs> So, I guess, uh, where do we start this week? Um, don't stuff your, kit, your tits with cocaine. No, please don't stuff your tits with cocaine. This sounds like something the Who would do, for fuck's sake. No, did you see that, that Sandy Relief concert? Did you see Raj Adultery? Those are not the abs of a man his age. No, I haven't seen him. Dude, dude has abs like the situation. <laughs> um, we learned that. Yes, you can get past a baggage charge, but. At what cost? At what cost? How did he not overheat, man? Yeah. Seven How did he sit? <laughs> it's not going to be a comfortable <laughs> flight. <laughs> Ralphie, I can't put my arms down. <laughs> Put your arms down when you get to school. <laughs> you can put your arms down when you get off the plane. <laughs> oh, OK. Uh, we also learned that. Whatever problems you're having that day, don't take it out on an innocent toilet. Just, just don't. Mm -hmm. What did the toilet I mean, do to you? Unless your problems are what of a digestive nature. And that's his job. Yeah, it's there to take. It's there to put up with your shit, not your bullets. Yeah. Um, we've learned that know your limits on the drinking, because yeah, running naked at a spa, you're not going to get in so much of a fight, more like a, a water slide. It's you you're going to get in kind of like an inadvertent orgy. Yeah, that's, that's what they're going for. Her. Hey, inadvertent slippery orgy, but. If that's not your goal. Yeah, because you, you're, you're, you know, you're fighting and you're fighting and you slide and suddenly something goes where. No. Yeah. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Because, no. you know, you're already lubed. We learned that if you are going to piss on a cop car. You have to. Stupid autoplay. Um. So yeah, if you're going to piss on a cop car, proportionate <laughs> response, my friends. Proportionate response. Maybe just pee on the side of the road. Yeah. You know, if you just hold it till the cops done with you. Right. If you're getting busted for a window tint, hold it till you get home. You're going down for murder. Why the fuck not? Proportionate response. There you go. This sort of sure. Thing. And finally, this week, I don't know what we learned. Tits full of cocaine. We learned drug lords are stupid. No, we learned drug mules are stupid. That too. Because the drug lords didn't have to do that to themselves. No. Yeah, you don't see them going. Okay, guys, I got a great idea how we're gonna get this stuff out of the country. I'm going to cut open my nutsack and stuff it full of cocaine. 